This video describes the Power Transformation Statlet. It's new in Stack Graphics Centurion version 17. Power transformations are widely used to convert data that do not follow a normal distribution to a metric in which the data are normally distributed. This can be very helpful if we wish to apply a method that assumes normality but in the original metric the data follows some other distribution. The statlet lets the analyst change the power dynamically to see the effect of various transformations. This slide defines the basic power transformation. Starting with a random variable y, we will, if necessary, add a small amount to each value to be sure that they're all greater than zero. We'll then take that result and raise it to the power p, where p is usually between minus 5 and 5. So we'll take y plus delta, raise it to the power p, unless p is 0, in which case we'll take the natural log of y plus delta. As I mentioned, delta is an optional adding. I've loaded into the Stack Graphics data sheet the resistivity of 100 electronic components. To get an initial look at their distribution, I'll go to the Statlets menu and select Interactive Histogram. The data is resistivity, and when I invoke it, you'll see a histogram. I think it's quite obvious from the histogram that these data are not normally distributed. In fact, if I add a non-parametric density estimator to it, you'll see that there is some definite positive skewness in the data. Now let's see if we can find some power that makes the data approximately normally distributed. To do this, I'll go to the Statlets menu and select power transformations. Resistivity again is the data and when it opens up an analysis window you'll see a quantile quantile or QQ plot. The way the QQ plot works is you take each value in your data set. In this case I have a hundred values of resistivity. Sort them from smallest to largest and plot them on the y-axis. On the x-axis you then find 100 equally spaced points between 0 and 1 and find out for a normal distribution with the same mean and standard deviation of the data where would you expect those quantiles to be. If you plot the empirical quantiles versus the quantiles of the best fitting normal distribution, you should find points that fall approximately along a straight line. That's clearly not true in this case. We've added two other features to the plot to help us judge whether or not the data come from a normal distribution. The first is the p-value for Shapiro-Wilk test. A Shapiro-Wilk test is a test for normality. If the data came from a normal distribution, we would expect to get an insignificant result, meaning we would expect to get a p-value greater than 0 0.05, for example, if we're operating at the 5% significance level. The p-value of 0, 0.0000 here is a very strong rejection of the hypothesis that my data could have come from a normal distribution. The second thing that's been added to the plot are 95% limits. Actually, 95% confidence limits for the percentiles of a normal distribution at various locations along the x-axis. We would expect most of the time if the data came from a normal distribution that the points would lie 
within these 95% confidence limits. Now, let's try raising the data to some power. The slider on the toolbar here controls the power to which the data are raised. You'll see that as I move the slider back and forth, I can change that power. Things that will change are the Shapiro-Wilk p-value, for example. And you notice as I reduce the power, that p-value becomes quite insignificant. Secondly, the shape of the points changes. It becomes much straighter and after a while lies within the confidence limits. If we want to find the optimal power, we can use what's called a Box-Cox transformation. In fact, if I push this Optimize button, it will find, according to Box and Cox, the optimal power, which it indicates is minus 0.4. The Shapiro-Wilk value at that power is 0.9021, very insignificant, suggesting that, in fact, the data may well come from a normal distribution if they're raised to the minus 0.4 power. Now, let's see how we could use this result. Let's suppose that there were a specification limit on resistivity. And let's suppose that resistivity was required to be less than or equal to 500. I might be interested in doing what's called a process capability analysis to see how capable I am of meeting that specification. To do that, I could go to Statlets and this time call up the process capability analysis. Resistivity is the data and there's an upper specification limit of 500. When I open up the analysis window, it will by default fit a normal distribution to resistivity. There's a lot of interesting information on this screen. You see in the right-hand margin capability indices, both short-term and long-term. You see a CPK and a PPK value. You see estimates of defects per million, which is the estimated number of components that would be above my upper spec of 500. You see short vertical lines at the mean plus and minus three standard deviations. I think I'll change that. I think I'll make them instead tolerance limits. In fact, I'm going to ask for 95-99 tolerance limits. Okay, there we go. And in fact, I'm going to ask for a 95-99 upper tolerance bound. The way I would interpret this result is that I am 95% certain that at least 99% of all my electronic components have resistivities of 428.34 or below. That would be a good result for an upper specification limit of 500. Of course, all of these results depend on the assumption that the data come from a normal distribution which we know is certainly not the case. There is another slider on the toolbar, however, that lets me change the power. If I want, I can reduce the power to the optimal Box-Cox level of minus 0.4. You now see that the implicit distribution is a distribution which is skewed to the right, the equivalent 95.99 upper tolerance bound is now 549.21, assuming that the transformed data follow a normal distribution. Unfortunately, that's above my upper spec of 500. And you can notice also that my CPKs and DPMs are not nearly as good as I thought they were, assuming normality. 
whether or not I like the results. What I've done by applying a power transformation is move the problem into a metric where the assumption of normality is a reasonable one. By doing this, I get results that I can believe.